All right, y'all, we're here in the building for day 20 of the 30-day challenge on how to improve your relationship by 3X. How many of y'all here in the building right now? All right, so I am Marshawn Olanio, and I'm a life and relationship strategist. I help men and women improve their relationship, hence the 30-day challenge of how to improve your relationship over the next three, uh, excuse me, over the next 30 days. So let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about mmm. -mm. <laughs> hey, Rowen, I see you watching. All right, so the topic of today is let's talk about sex. How much sex are you and your spouse, you and your partner having? How often are you guys getting in between the sheets? I'm going to keep it as clean as possible because I understand that some people around their kids, but let's just talk about S-E-X and how important it is in your relationship. Um, it's very important in your relationship because... Sex actually brings you and your mate closer together. It builds the connection. It builds the bond. It keeps you too happy to be around each other. It also makes you feel like, guess what? I am not in a relationship with a roommate. You don't want to be in a relationship with a roommate. A lot of people are in relationships and they are have they are in sexless um, relationships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Chantel. Okay, okay. All right, good. Y'all have a sex a lot. Good, good. <laughs> but um, so you don't want to be in a roommate situation when you're in a relationship with your spouse, with your lover. And a sexless relationship actually is defined by having sex less than once a month. So basically it's actually it's actually less than that. It's actually having sex less than 10 times per year. So that's actually less because a year is 12 months, right? So if you are having sex less than once a month, then you are in a considered in a sexless relationship. Now sometimes I understand there are periods and stages that the relationship goes through and so you might be in one of those stages but overall if you two are there all the time and you don't have a toddler running around that's interrupting or if you um you know you're not really working on said things like goals or something like that y'all should be trying to get in between the sheets so do not <laughs> do not um stop having sex all right uh Another thing that we do, some people do, is to use sex as a weapon. Don't use sex as a weapon in your relationship because sex is going to help you again feel bonded, feel connected with your spouse. But anytime you're, you are using sex as a weapon in your relationship, you're actually tearing down the connection. You're breaking the bond in your relationship. Most of the time, this occurs when you get ticked off at your spouse. One person wants to have sex, the other person doesn't. And that person that doesn't is using it as a weapon. Or if you don't do this, you won't get X. X in this case is sex. Don't use sex as a weapon in your relationship. You're killing your relationship. When you do start to use sex as a, as a uh, weapon, guess what? You increase the chances that somebody going to come in and that spouse that is um, longing for the sex longing to be held is going to go outside of y'all relationship and get the very thing that they're longing for. Yeah, I'm letting that sink in. You are part of the problem of increasing the fact that a cheating situation could come in between you and your partner. Now, I get it. It's all about a choice. We, we're not going down that rabbit hole. I'm talking about you and what you are adding to the destruction of your relationship. Because we're trying to improve our relationships, sex is a part of improving your relationship. It's a part of keeping the connection going. It's also going to decrease the insecurities that you have within your relationship. Sometimes, all right, I'll just talk about me. When I, when I um, finally had the baby... And a lot of women can attest to this one. You have the baby, you got this pudge, it doesn't go down right away. You might be wrestling with these, with this extra weight that you had on um, pre-baby and everything. You're not feeling as sexy. You don't want to necessarily take off your clothes in front of your spouse anymore because you're not feeling as sexy as you once did. And if some of you are like me, you might earn your tiger stripes. 
So you're not feeling that sexy. And you're like, okay, I know that we have to have sex, but uh, kind of lagging on it. Or maybe you're a person who always wants to turn off the lights because of you don't like your body any longer. But you can work on your body. You can work on your body. You can get yourself back together. You can keep it tight, keep it right, and just feel sexy. Know that you are a blessing. You were the vessel. You earned your tiger stripes. In this case, I earned my tiger stripes, okay? And it is what it is. Hey, Marty, thanks for watching. I see you. Adding sex to your relationship um, keeps the relationship open. It keeps the relationship at a comfortable state. And you'll feel more um, able to share things with your spouse in an open manner. You'll feel comfortable enough to say, you know what? I can actually have this conversation. Even if you are being strategic, you don't want to talk about said topic before because you stressed out, your partner stressed out. Soon as the sex over or after you, after you calm down, maybe you had to take a nap, whatever it is, right? You come back and then you can have the talk because now you have some more relief, less stressed, less things to think about. It's easier to have a topic about a hard, quote unquote, conversation after sex because you're relaxed, less stressed. Nothing is really um, like a fearful thing for you to talk about after sex. So if you want to be strategic about it, it doesn't matter. Just as long as you're having sex, okay? Uh, like I said, it's definitely going to keep the connection up between you and your spouse. So continue to have sex. Now, I want to tell you guys a few of the benefits, a few of the health benefits to having sex with your spouse. You're going to get some better sleep. I don't know about you, but anytime we release, <laughs> man, we in there sleeping. That can be some of the best sleep that you didn't get <laughs> after that session. So it's going to help you sleep better by having sex with your spouse. It's going to build up your immune system, give you a stronger immune system when you have sex with your spouse. For those of you out there who get headaches, it's going to help with headache relief. I actually don't know how this is happening specifically to the headaches, but it gives you headache relief. For those of you out there with high blood pressure, it lowers your blood pressure. Yes, just by having sex, implementing sex into your relationship, especially if you're not doing it on a regular basis. Hey, Tony, I see you. Having sex with your spouse gives you more energy. You think that it would deplete you and take you away. But after the session and after that nap, man, you got some energy. You got some energy after the, afterwards. You just feel so light. All of that heaviness that you carried around on your shoulder, you just feel so light afterwards. So have sex with your spouse. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about, which is it decreases... Um, specifically to women, UTIs. And then for men, it decreases prostate cancer. And it also decreases ED. For, the old, for those of you out there who don't understand what ED is, it's erectile dysfunction. So that one is specifically to the men. Having more sex will decrease the chances of UTIs, of prostate cancer, of erectile dysfunction. So have more sex with your partner. Do not use sex as a weapon. <laughs> yes, Tony said, dust it off. Dust it off, y'all. Dust it off. <laughs> Get back to the loving. Get back to the having fun. Get back to the romance in your relationship. I get it. Sometimes you're not feeling like romantic, but you need to get it in. Do what you need to do to get you where you need to get so you can have more fun, so you can improve your relationship, so you can enjoy your relationship. So you can enjoy your spouse. All right, y'all. This is day 20 of how to improve your relationship. I am Marshawn Olanio, your life and relationship strategist. I will talk to you guys tomorrow right here around the same time. All right. Around the same time. In between 815 and 830 Pacific Standard Time. See y'all again tomorrow. Deuces.